Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. I'm Sean David, and as always, thanks for tuning in. I'm a hardcore NBA old school fan, especially when it comes to the 80s and the 1990s. That's why to me there's nothing more interesting than listening to the guys from back in the days and listening to them talking about how they feel, how they would match up in today's game. Especially when it comes to the guys of the Chicago Bulls in the mid 1990s and how they feel how they would match up against yeah the Golden State Warriors of today, for example. I mean, there's so many videos of Dennis Rodman and Scottie Pippen, for example, talking how they feel how they would play against the Golden State Warriors. So this gave me the idea for this video. So on today's video, I want to talk about how I feel the mid-1990s Bulls would do against today's Golden State Warriors. But before we start with this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click on the notifications bell so you always get notified once I upload a new video. And I would say, let's get right into the stuff. Who would win that game? I mean, who would you want? First of all, who would you want to guard? You got the rant locked down or? Well, you know what? <laughs> she said no. <laughs> so <I> said, <laughs> no. Walking into the arena the other day, runs into Paul Pabst from Dan Patrick Show. Yeah. Paul asks him, uh, if your team from 96 played these Warriors, what would happen? And Scotty said, we would sweep them. The 96 Bulls would sweep the Warriors. Charles, what do you think? I disagree with Scotty. I think the Warriors would win one game. As a fan, you wish you had the power to put two teams of different eras against each other. The Showtime Lakers, Hakeem Olajuwon's Houston Rockets, the Shaq and Kobe Lakers, the Bad Boy Pistons, and so on and so on. The Golden State Warriors are dominating today's NBA. Many people even say that they're the best team of all time. And on the other side, there are old school fans like me who don't want to hear that nonsense. So let's compare today's Golden State Warriors with the 96 Chicago Bulls. And to be clear, we're talking about today's rules. But before we get into detail, let's recapture their seasons. The first 72 and 10 year was special, but by the end of it, the media attention was great. And then for the next two years, it just stayed the same. That group was completely different than our group. It, it was more of a rock and roll show. We called it the Beatles with Michael, Scotty, and Dennis. There was always, no matter what time of night you arrived in a city, there'd still be 100, 200, 300 people standing in front of the hotel. People are, are bringing their kids out just for a chance to see Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, Dennis Rodman. I never dreamt of basketball being that important to people's lives. It was just a road show for us, and the road show became really good because we were kicking teams' butt along the way. They had to compete every night because every other team was giving them their absolute best. Some of the criticism was that anybody could win with Michael, and anybody could win with Michael, Scotty, and Dennis. That's not necessarily true. The genius of Phil was his ability to get these guys, even though there were so many stars, to play together collectively with a common goal in mind at the end of the year. That was where Phil was so great. Phil did a real good job in the latter parts of our careers of really holding us back and keeping us hungry for the game. Not clock at five, Pippen for three. Yes! They were smart. They had smart players and guys that knew how to play. It was tough to match up against them. Our stuff worked really well against them, but they had the one guy that could come out there and put you to sleep pretty quick. Just a tremendous competitor. It's the clock, five on the 24. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. Jordan. And from the first tip, the Warriors came out flying with their high-tempo, explosive basketball on display for all to watch. Curry for three, got it! Of all the guys to leave open, you can't leave that guy open. With Steve Kerr recovering from off-season back surgery, the team rose to the challenge. Curry takes it away from Joe Noah. Lob to Iguodala! Running off a record 24 straight wins to begin the season. 28 straight, second longest winning streak in NBA history. 
and 24 and 0 to begin the season. The all-star core of Curry, Thompson, and Green led the Warriors to a blistering mark of 48 and 4 at the all-star break. Curry with the three. And it is the triple double. The mythical number of 72 wins was within reach. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! With six tenths of a second remaining. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. We're going to start with the point guard position, so Ron Harper versus Steph Curry. When the beginning looks like a short sure thing for Curry, it's way tougher than you think. Before Harper joined the Chicago Bulls, he averaged 20 points, 6 rebounds and 5 assists a game over his entire career. Once he played for the Bulls, he took a completely different role. Of course, Steph Curry is an incredible player and also the way better scorer, but Harper was one of the best guard defenders of the 90s. Even until today, he ranks 23rd in all-time steals. So in a game between the Warriors and the Bulls, Harper wouldn't have to score, but concentrate on defense and guarding Steph. Next on the shooting guard position, we have Michael Jordan versus Klay Thompson. Both players are amazing scorers as amazing defenders. But in today's game, Michael Jordan would average 40 points a game. I'm dead serious. Sounds crazy, but Michael scored over 30 points when opponents were not only hand-checking, but also beating MJ physically. Many NBA legends believe that Michael would even score more than 40 points a game. On the other side, Clay will get his buckets. But against MJ, a defensive player of the year, not an easy job. In 96, MJ averaged 30 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 4.3 assists, and 2.2 steals. Sorry, Clay, but not a chance. Next, we'll have the small forward position, so Scottie Pippen versus Kevin Durant. As a scorer, Pippen doesn't stand a chance against KD. KD could easily average 30 points a game if he wanted to. Pittman, on the other hand, was always a around 20 points guy. When it comes to rebounding, they're about the same. Pittman had less rebounds since Rotman joined the team, obviously. On defense, it's not even close. KD improved, but Pittman was the way better defender. But in general, that won't go to the Warriors, but close. Next, we'll have the power forward position, so Dennis Rotman versus Draymond Green. I like Draymond Green a lot, a physical player who's tough and the soul of his team. But this would be the first time Draymond would play against somebody like Dennis Rotman. Draymond is definitely the better scorer, but Rotman will dominate this one. Rotman almost averaged twice as many rebounds as Draymond did, and Rotman is the master not only of physical play, but also the psychological part of the game. And that's since the bad boy Piston days. So sorry Draymond, Rotman got that one. So let's have a look at the big position. Both Longley and Zaza weren't the vocal points of their team. Solid big, solid role players to round up the starting lineup. But even though Longley had better stats in every category, but the field goal percentage, I would still call it a draw. Now that it comes to the bench players, I gotta be honest, both teams are really good. Tony Kukoc was a 6'10 player who shot threes even in the 90s, with great ball handling skills, great passing skills, who averaged 15 points and 7'7 from the bench, who also got awarded the 6th man of the year award by the way. Then you had Steve Kerr who was the best 3 point shooter in NBA history percentage wise. You had guys like Bill Wennington, Judd Bushler, Randy Brown, a lot of really good role players who knew exactly what they had to give for the team. But also the Warriors had a very deep bench, you had guys like Javel McGee, Sean Livingston, Andre Iguodala, David West. So that team was loaded too. As you can see, both teams are almost exactly at the same level. But here's why I would pick the Bulls over the Warriors. Number one, the competitiveness. Nobody on this planet was as competitive as Michael Jordan. I actually spoke to some of his former teammates and they told me the practice was even more competitive than most of their games. Number two, the coaching. Steve Kerr is a phenomenal coach and I'm really happy that he's doing well. But Phil Jackson maybe is the best coach ever. So as I mentioned earlier, I would pick the Chicago Bulls. But even as a 90s fan, I gotta admit the Warriors are great and you gotta give credit where credit is due. These Warriors would beat those Bulls. We can, we were, we're talking about the Chicago but Bulls. But you can't take that team because they're constructed under the rules that are here. Huh? So they're but, saying, okay, under these rules, can you but, bring those well, actually, teams here? But you know what, you have, you, you probably have three of the probably the all-time best defensive player on one team, me and Michael Scotty. So we didn't care who we guarded because we was all the same size. You know, I think Scotty people would like who like to rat down. Michael would like whoever else down. I would like whoever else down. It doesn't matter. Hey you guys, if you're active on Facebook, I can really recommend Open Court. As an NBA fan, you should find everything you need. If it's funny NBA videos, impressive highlights, or even NBA news, I check out Open Court every day.